Hi, my name is Rutger Hamel and I drive a Volvo 244 GL. I um, picked this car because I wanted a really fun first car that, you know, is a bit different from what everybody else has. Generally people pick like a Volkswagen Golf or like a Fiesta or something. And I wanted something that was more enjoyable to drive and just more unique. I was actually interested in like a Volvo 244s for quite some time because when I was young my mum had a Volvo 740 which I absolutely loved back then and uh, since then we even got like an XC90 recently so I was like I need to get like this Volvo so I've been looking for about a year or so uh, at different 240s because the one I kind of wanted was quite specific I wanted a, a early models between 1975 and 1977 uh, with like the round headlights and this sort of style with the chrome um, and I wanted some unique color because yeah I just love like the way that the lines show with this color on it so after about a year of looking I found this car on like a Dutch website when I was there for one week on holiday and I was like I need to get it I just I call up a guy I was like hey can I please like test drive it, it was the first 240 I test driven and I fell in love just the way it drove the way it looked yeah immediately just fell in love. owned or bought from new by the uh, Moroccan embassy in Sweden and was used as an embassy car for I don't know how long but it stayed there with the embassy until 40 years later when it was finally sold off to a Dutch Volvo collector. Uh, he bought it but about a year later he really wanted a uh, P1800 so <laughs> that's why he sold it and uh, when I bought it, I immediately imported it to uh, Switzerland because I just love the, the Alpine roads here and the way everything is. So I was like, yeah, it should be fine because uh, it passed all the tests in the Netherlands, no problems, nothing. Um, importing should be easy. <laughs> I was so wrong. <laughs> the car was in almost perfect condition, but in the end, we had to take so much of the car apart and like literally make it like new because uh, the way that like the standards here are they're just it has to be perfect and if it isn't perfect you can't import it um, I even tried to get it on classic car insurance but it has three tiny little specks of rust in the paint on the, uh, the boot of the car which you can't you can barely see with like the naked eye but that was enough for it to not be granted a special sort of classic car insurance policy um, but honestly, for me, that just adds character, you know. This car has been used by a bunch of different people for a bunch of different reasons. And when I got it, I just wanted to have fun with it. So I use it as a daily driver. I use it in summer, I use it in winter. And I just have fun with it. Recently, in 2018, I applied to do the Bernina Gran Turismo um, to like do like a hill climb race with it. And I was really hoping I could get in, but I wasn't really thinking it would happen because generally they only accept historic race cars. And this by no means is a race car. But even if I drive like a race car, it, you know, <laughs> it's a little different. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised when they said yes, because generally they have 
a slightly older like audience who comes there and drives cars because you, you need the money in order to afford the really fast classic cars. Um, but yeah, I gave my all. I had a blast of a time and I was even able to beat like five or six other historic race cars that were there up the, the mountain. So <laughs> I was very happy with that. And uh, as you can maybe see, the uh, car recently took part in the Bernina Gran Turismo for a second time, but this time driven by my mom in uh, 2020, uh, where she was the only like female, part of the only female team in uh, the Bernina Gran Turismo. And yeah, she did amazing. I've actually been wanting to um, play with this car in the snow for quite some time, but it's been tricky because I uh, studied in the UK. Uh, I studied car design. I wasn't here very often. I was here sometimes during the winter or during the summer, but whenever I was here during the winter, here lower down by the lake, it was rarely ever snowing. And I just never got the opportunity to uh, go up to the mountains or dare to try and go up to the mountains and drift. Um, but today we tried it and I'm very glad we did because I, uh, I've never had as much fun in this car as today. Just experiencing the way it feels with, you know, having no traction control, no spirit to control, uh, no ABS and no um, power steering. You just feel everything that the car does in every single corner, the way it just moves. It's telepathic, it's, it's amazing. And uh, <laughs> only had one small incident where I may have locked up a little bit and gone straight into a snowbank. But these cars are also known as tanks and thankfully there's no damage. So no, I'm very pleased uh, with this car and I think you know, I'll be keeping it for the rest of my life because I've just got such a special bond with it. This car is a uh, four-speed manual uh, with about 101 horsepower. So it isn't like the fastest car in the world, but just the way it drives, it's super smooth on the road. The suspension's amazing. The seats are super luxurious. It, <laughs> it doesn't have much on it, but it just makes you feel amazing when you drive it. Um, it's just really relaxing, but when you're on a nice mountain road and you want to push, it lets you push. It just, it's so nice going through the gears, going up the RPMs. And um, yeah, you know, it's never going to let you down. It's, it's always um, really strong. It's uh, never had any mechanical issues, or if it has, it's been my news. It would never stop me from, from driving it. I've never been at the side of the road with like trouble and had to call help for help. So in 2016, I uh, started studying automotive and transport design at Coventry University. And uh, when I started studying that, I, I mean, I've always been in love with cars. I've always liked them. And, you know, it's, when you're young, you really like the supercars and stuff. But as I grew older, I grew more appreciation for the classic cars. And um, a lot of them are unobtainable just purely because the prices are skyrocketing so much. So I wanted something unique, something fun, preferably rear wheel drive. And um, yeah, as a car designer, I just wanted something that looks, looked as good as possible on the road. So in my eye, this is uh, one of the best, if not the best car Volvo ever made. And um, that's why I got it. And that's why I still drive it today.